Hi everyone, welcome to week 16 of On Science and Cooking. This week we will be exploring the topic of cricket flour and how cricket flour may affect different bakery recipes, mostly focusing around the muffin. The objectives we will be learning this week are as follows. How does the percent cricket flour affect the elastic modulus of a muffin? The qualities of cricket batter and how to obtain a viscosity through a modified line spread test. And finally, we will be looking at the density of the muffin to see how the cricket flour may impact the density of a muffin. We will also be going into the kitchen of Tim Johnson, where he will be baking up some muffins, and we will look to see how he found the best way to make a muffin is. We will be also talking to our science expert, Tim the Science Guy, where Tim will be discussing the details around how cricket flour may be impacting gluten and some more of the technical aspects of what to expect when baking with cricket flour. Hi everyone, welcome to my kitchen. So this is where I experimented with the different types of cricket flour in a muffin recipe. So first I weighed out all the ingredients and when weighing out the flour, what I did was substitute based on the mass different percentages of cricket flour and then mix them in just the same way, same temperature, same everything. Then at the end of the experiment, I looked at the batter, I looked at the final muffins and made some calculations. So first I looked at the batter viscosity. I used a modified line spread test, which means I did a line spread test, which means put them on a piece of paper, see how far they traveled. But because the batter wasn't moving, I added weight, which allowed them to spread. I then measured the elastic modulus. And with the elastic modulus, I used a ruler, um, took the typical stress of restrain test, and then uh, calculated the elasticity. Then, uh, finally, I looked at the density of the muffins. So I didn't find really any significant differences in the density. Um, this was mostly due either to that there was no difference or that because there were so many different trials, they were spaced out over several days. So this definitely could have been a variable impacting the muffins. Hello, everyone. This week we will be talking about cricket flour and some of the interesting properties that it may have when applied to a bakery product. Cricket flour has been on the rise in the news recently because it seems to be a more sustainable for source of protein as well as a new novel ingredient that both chefs and food processors can use. The interesting thing is though, when you add cricket flour to a bakery product, you impact the elasticity therefore creating an inverse relationship where the, as you increase the percentage of cricket flour, you decrease the elastic modulus. This is interesting. It has a lot to do with how gluten forms. The stronger a matrix gluten forms, likely the stronger the elastic modulus. When exploring in the kitchen, we can see that the best percentages for cricket flour tend to be anything under 15%, at least when it comes to a muffin. So, as you increase past 15%, you can have some significant impacts on texture as well as mouthfeel and elasticity.